So, uh, uh, born at Kuzwe. So, I'm well and born again this morning. Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. And uh, for those who may not know me, I'm Stephen Jeroge Solomon. And I'm a son in this house. And uh, this particular time, I want to appreciate God for this opportunity. Uh, even as I appreciate uh, Bishop and Mom in absentia for the opportunity and the pastoral team. I do not take it for granted. And uh, I want to thank God that Sunday we all gathered together in Shiro to celebrate uh, the 40th anniversary since this uh, ministry began. And uh, as we were being reminded, we have been reminded uh, uh, that after 40, there is, a, uh, there is the 41. And we have been reminded there are new frontiers, there are new growth, new opportunities, fresh dreams, fresh direction, new horizons, and, and uh, fresh dimensions. But I, I, I picked three things that a speaker uh, talked about. Two of them were from Genesis 13, 14 to 17, and one was from Deuteronomy uh, 2, verse 7. And we have been reminded, the first thing we have been reminded, about new frontiers without, without limits. Because Abraham was told, look on your, on your north, your south, your east, and your west. And uh, within that of the, the new frontiers, we have been told about three things, about territories. And not territories just for us, for us and our generations. They will be given to us. We have been reminded about treasures, because uh, he was told everything you see. So, and we have been reminded that even as a ministry, or even as individuals, even in the next 40 years, after, after 40, we, uh, we should expect uh, God to channel supernatural resources. And about the issue of time, that this, uh, the, uh, the, the blessings or our influence will be for, forever. And this is what uh, we have been reminded that our influence as DCIKZ, our influence as, uh, uh, as, as believers uh, will, not, uh, will never decrease because God will continue to be with us. So, so the second thing we have been reminded to arise and walk. Arise and walk. So we have been reminded, as we have been told to arise and walk, we have been reminded there is some work to do. And today, as I will be speaking, I'll be speaking based on this second, second, uh, second point, arise and walk, that there are things that also will be expected for us to do even after 40. And the third thing we have been reminded, that God indeed has been with us for the last 40 years. God will also be with us even in the next phase. And that's what uh, the word of God in Deuteronomy 2.7 says that. Uh, the law, this was Moses who was telling the, uh, the Israelites in Deuteronomy 2 verse 7. The Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He has watched over your journey through this first wilderness. These 40 years, the Lord your God has, give, uh, has been with you and you have not lacked anything. Even us, we, we can say that indeed the Lord has been with us. And God is going to carry us through. So there are new frontiers without remit. We need to arise and walk. And they are, uh, the, just as the way the Lord has been with us for the last 40 years, we'll be with us. That's what I was able to pick. <clears throat> and today, uh, by the grace of God, uh, I would like we, we, we look at um, a, a theme that I'm calling, uh, after 40, after 40, there are challenges to face head on. After 40, there are challenges to face head on head on and uh, uh, we are, numbers in the Bible have great significance and should never be take, seen as just some coincidence they take symbolic meaning and significance God uses numbers consistently to bring out spirit, some spiritual truth and, and for example number one in the Bible signifies beginning or unity number two speaks of witness Number three speaks of Godhead, that is the Trinity. Number seven speaks of perfection. Number 12 of, uh, is symbolic of governance, government. But 40, which, which we'll be, we'll, we, are, we are dealing with, 40 speaks of probation, probation, testing, crossing in victory, or judgment. Three things, probation, testing, crossing in victory, and judgment. And one thing we need to know for those who work and maybe you are put under probation. So after probation, there is confirmation or establishment. <clears throat> after testing, there is a testimony. 
After trial, there is victory. So we know that God is not yet through with us, but God has great things in store for us. Therefore, even as we talk about uh, 40 days, 40 days and nights, 40 years, Scripture also talks about 40 rashes or stripes. They all have the same symbolic meaning. They are talking about probation, testing, closing in victory or judgment. And we know that judgment can be either be positive or negative. And as the speaker was speaking on Sunday, uh, the Lord reminded me uh, something. Uh, between, between May 2002 to 2007, I operated a matatu business. And my, my vehicles were Route 33, 34. That is Embakasi and Savannah Greenfield. Uh, there were three matatus, uh, the, uh, and I was operating under a Basava circle. And uh, what was unique, and that's what I was being reminded, is the name that I had given them. In front, at the windscreen there at the top, I had indicated after 40 days, and uh, after 40 days, and then at the back, uh, at the, the rear windscreen, uh, screen, wind, wind screen, I had put three dots. God's victory came. So that was the, the name that I was operating with. And I remember some people could, could, uh, could come and, uh, and they tell me, hey, hey it's a man, uh, man of God. Hey, it seems here there is a, a powerful message that is in this. Because they could see after 40 days, and going back there, they could see three dots. God's victory came. And uh, I, I was and still is my conviction that the Lord remains our song changer. He gives us new songs, songs of victory. And today, our main scripture, or the key scripture that will be, uh, 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 key scripture is in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 16. And I would like it projected in the NIV version. But it says, for 40 days, the Philistine came forward every morning. So for 40 days, the Philistine came forward every morning and evening and took his stand. Um, so, uh, he, uh, so, so here, when you look at this from verse 1 to 3, uh, because it's quite lengthy, because we, uh, we are going to be referring to uh, verse 1 to verse 53, I'll not read everything, but I'll be picking key things. But from verse 1 to verse 3, the Philistines and the Israelites faced each other on opposite hills with a valley between them. So they were preparing to fight. But in verse 8 to 11, the Philistine champion who was Goriath could take his stand to challenge Saul and the Israelites. And the challenge was to choose one man to fight him. If he killed him, then the Philistines were to be their slaves. But if Goliath killed, killed the person, who, who, the, the Israelite who volunteered himself, the Israelites were to be their slaves. But um, in verse 16, this challenge was persistent. Because the scripture says that for 40 days, every morning and evening. But in verse 23, something happens. Things took a different turn when Goliath, in his usual bragging, came out shouting his challenge. That is verse 23, came out uh, bragging out, uh, his, uh, bragging, out, bragging, came out shouting his challenge to the Israelites, and David had it. And David had it. In verse 26, uh, in this verse, it's worth noting that David picked out what the other Israelites were not picking. Goriath had brought disgrace. Uh, uh, verse 26, uh, 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 in verse 26, it's worth noting that David picked what the other Israelites had not. Goriath had brought disgrace in Israel and was not in covenant relationship with God and dared to disrespect those in covenant relationship with God. This is something the others had not picked. But in verse 31 to 32, what David said was overheard and reported to Saul. And Saul sent for him. And when he met King Saul, he did not hesitate to take up or accept Goria's challenge. And finally, in verse 45 to 51, things took a different turn when David confronted this, uh, the Philistine champion, Goriath, by Bodrick uh, uh, declaring, declaring to him that he was going against him in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom he had defied. 
And God indeed granted David and the Israelites victory. That was just introduction. You only may be here, but uh, there was something that I would like us to, to discuss. So we see that, yes, this, uh, this person, Goriath, the Philistine champion, was bragging. He was taking his stand for 40 days, morning and evening. But they are that, no one dared to challenge him. But we see David coming up, uh, uh, coming up, and we saw uh, him, uh, he, he faced the challenge head on. And we see that at the end of the day, when he confronted uh, the giant head on, not on his, through his own power, but uh, depending wholly on God, they were able to get victory. And the disgrace came to an end. So uh, from this uh, scripture, from 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 1 to 53, there are a few lessons that we can be able to pick uh, from David, even as we embrace uh, the challenges before us after, after 40. So there are a few lessons, and those, this is what I would like to tell, and they are just five. <clears throat> the first one is that obedience, obedience reads us to our opportunities. Obedience reads us to our opportunities. David, obey, obedience to his, uh, to his father turned out to be a divine setup for him to get an opportunity of a lifetime. So in your own time, you'll be able to read and you'll see David had been sent by his father because his, uh, his three brothers were among the, uh, the, uh, the, the army of Israel to, take, to check how they were faring and also to take food for them. But because he showed up, he obeyed his father, it was a divine setup for him to get an opportunity of a, of a lifetime. And this was when he heard uh, Goriath bragging <clears throat> and he felt provoking his spirit. And uh, the, uh, the same scenario uh, is also seen in the Bible. Uh, with the story of Saul in 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1 to 3, and says, there was a man of, uh, of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zerah, the son of uh, Bechorath, the son of Api, a, a Benjamite, a, uh, a, a mighty man of power. And he had a choice and had some son whose name was Saul, there was not more had some person than among the children of Israel. From his shoulders upward, he was taller than any of the, uh, any of the people. Verse 3. Now that the donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to his son Saul, Please, take one of the servants with you, and arise, go, and look for the donkey. You can see the name arise, just as we have been reminded that we need to arise. <clears throat> so he was told to arise. And we know that he obeyed. Let's go to verse 15 to 17. We saw that we see it was a divine setup. Uh, the scripture says that, that where now the Lord had told Saul. After, here it's after Saul uh, and the servant, they had not gotten the donkeys. And they, and they felt that they, they wanted to go back because the, Saul thought the father would be concerned. And, uh, but he was told there is a man of God in, uh, in this city. And as there was, they were about to meet uh, this man of God who was... Uh, prophet Samuel, the word of God now here is saying that now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear the day before Saul came saying, tomorrow about this time I'll send you a man from the land of Benjamin and you shall anoint him commander of my people Israel that he may save my people from the hand of the Philistines for I have looked upon my people because their cry has come to me. Verse 17. So when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said to him, there he is, the man of whom I spoke to you. This, is, this one shall reign over my people. So you see, it was a divine setup. But the divine setup came only because he obeyed. If he did not obey, he could not become a king. Also, David, we know that he, he, he later became a, a king because um, God was on his side and he obeyed his father. So, and uh, we know that the word of God reminds us that obedience is better than sacrifice. So if there is a path that we need to follow, we need to follow the path of obedience, even, in a, uh, even after 40. So, and as we run to obey, opportunities will show up. We need to know that opportunities are never lost, but you only miss opportunities. So be in the right place so that you'll not miss out the opportunities. And you, when the opportunities come, then we need to, uh, uh, to face them head on to the glory of God. And we saw in verse 23, 
Goriath, in his, uh, in his usual bragging, came out shouting his challenge to the Israelites, and David heard it, that in verse, verse 23. And um, this provoked him, and he was restless, and he started to inquire further. So the first thing we need to know is that for us uh, to, be, um, to be victorious, even after 40, we need to walk in obedience. And no wonder the word of God in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, uh, uh, King Jehoshaphat reminded the Israelites that believe in the Lord your God and you will be established. Believe in his prophets and you will prosper. You shall prosper. Use the word you shall prosper. So even for us, there will be assignments you will be requested uh, to, to do, but when we obey, we know, we know that God can make those, uh, as we move to our obedience, those can be converted into divine setup so that we are able to get the opportunity that God has for us. Because he continues uh, to, re to read us every way. So the first thing that obedience reads us to our opportunity. And indeed, David, when he obeyed, he was able to be in the right place and he had that challenge. And that challenge is what changed, his life, tra changed and transformed his life. The second point, we view things differently when we identify a cause in it. We view things differently when we identify a cause in it. And when we are talking about a cause, I was looking at the synonym of the word uh, cause, and, and this includes give rise to, or read to, or resort in. Or in other words, in, in the business setup, they talk about purpose. Uh, that if you serve with, if you work with purpose, then you'll be more impactful. <clears throat> so we need to be uh, purposeful in whatever we, di we did. So and here, when you talk about cause, uh, in, other, in other words, we are saying, our perspective change when we understand the why or see the bigger picture. For example, we will not hesitate to support the vision of DCIKZ as a ministry when we embrace that vision, when we buy into the vision. Because we will know why we do some of the things. And that's why, for example, Bishop has been very passionate with the issue of the Father's vision. And those people who have gone through the Father's vision, they are able to identify the vision of this church and they are able to serve effectively because they know why they are serving. So let's look at the scripture from uh, verse 27 to 29. And the word of God says that, and the people answered him, that, uh, that, that was David as he was inquiring, saying, uh, so shall it be done for the man who kills him. Verse 28. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab anger was aroused against David, and he said, why did you come down here? With whom have you left those few uh, sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, what have I done? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? And cause is purpose in, a, in, in, sim, in simpler time, in terms. So David ignored his brother because he believed there was a cause. And the cause was to remove disgrace from Israel and bring to an end the defiance towards the armies of the living God. For Israel remained a Lord's special treasure or treasured possession. Remember, as uh, Goriath was speaking to the Israelites, he was calling them uh, the armies of Saul. But they were not armies of Saul, but they were armies of God. So because uh, the, the situation that was there, Remember, David was anointed to be the king, but Saul continued to reign. But so it was like uh, Saul, a sheep, was leading lions. So he was not very effective. But later we usually see that David came in and that uh, scenario change, changed. For, here, for us here in DCIKZ, as we support the vision in this ministry, we will do it because it is for the advancement of God's kingdom. The cause made David to be restless. So when we, we, we know the why we are doing whatever we are doing, when we embrace, for example, the vision of this ministry, then we will be restless even as we stand to be counted in the advancement of the kingdom of God. Be it in giving, be it in serving. It doesn't matter what kind of service that you do, but provided you are serving. And you are serving him because you love him. The... Uh, the third point is that uh, only the truth we know and apply benefit, uh, benefits us. 
Only the truth we know and apply benefits us. David knew and understood that he and the rest of the Israelites were in covenant relationship with God, which unlike Goriath and the other Philistines. And we, we need to know that covenants have both privileges and responsibilities. And uh, one of the privileges or, uh, or one of the benefits is that when you are in a covenant with someone, your battle becomes their battles. So David knew because they were in covenant, he knew that God was on their side. And, uh, and severally, in, uh, in two instances, that is uh, verse 26 and 36, there is something that David spoke about. Here the, the word of God says, Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? So he was using the word uncircumcised Philistines, that he should defy the armies of the living God. Verse 36. Your servant has killed both Rion and, and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. You see, David knew that the, uh, the armies of the living God, but the Philistines were calling, uh, they were calling uh, uh, he was calling them the armies of souls. So he was distorting their identity. So, but, and uh, what was David referring to? I had not, uh, media, maybe you can go to Genesis 17, verse 7 to 11, so that we see what David was uh, referencing to. And this was uh, God speaking to Abraham and said, And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in, in their generations. For an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger. All the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession and I'll be their God. And God said to Abraham, as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. We are going to uh, up to verse 11. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you, you and your descendants after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised. And you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins and shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. So this is what David was trying to, uh, to point out. So he came out with, uh, uh, with the covenant mentality, which was not there with the rest. And that's why we are saying only the truth we know and apply will be of benefit to us. The others knew it. They knew they were in covenant with God, but no one ever dared to proclaim that. So in, your diverse, in our diverse situations, we need to know what the word of God says, to, uh, says or declares about our situations. Because we can only claim or declare what we know and believe. So if, for example, the word of God, uh, your Bible remains closed, you do not attend even the, uh, the Bible study on, on, on Wednesday or even on Sunday, you are too busy not to come, you fail to interact with the word of God, what, what promise can you be able to claim? You can only claim that which you know. And that's why the word of God needs to dwell in us richly. So the question is, do you know who you are? Even as you encounter the diverse, uh, your diverse challenges, and you know there is this song by a Snatch which said, I know who I am. So do you know who you are? And even in uh, the word of God in uh, Daniel 11, that too says, but, but the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. So even in the new frontier, that is, uh, of this frontier is of after 40, we are still the church. And Jesus is the one who is building his church and all the powers of hell shall not prevail against it. That's what Jesus declared. So we know that Jesus is the one who is building his church. So this, that point we are saying, only the truth we know and apply will be of benefit to us. And the fourth point is that despite, uh, reason, uh, despite ac accepting the challenge, some people might doubt our capacity to accomplish. Despite accepting the challenge, some people might doubt our capacity to accomplish. So we, uh, we, we saw in verse 28, David's elder brother doubting his motive and capacity 
when he heard him inquire what was to be done for the man who killed the Philistine champion. And despite volunteering himself to go and fight the Philistine champion, Goriath, while no one else dared to, King Saul doubted his capacity to accomplish this mission. And we can see this in verse 32 and 33. Verse 32 and 33. So the word of God says, Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. 33. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight for, with him, for you are a youth and he's a man of war from his youth. So we see here even, even uh, Saul doubting him. But David was confident that the Lord who rescued him from the cross of the lion and the bear would rescue him from the Philistine champion. And because of his confidence and conviction in the Lord, his rescuer, King Saul finally gave his consent and even his blessing. And he said, and may the Lord be with you. This is from that verse 34 to 37. 34 to 37. 34 to 37. Okay. It says, but David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep, and when a lion or a bear came and took a ramp out of the frog, frog, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the ramp from its mouth, and when it arose against me, I caught it, by its uh, bread and stuck and killed it. Your servant sh uh, has killed both Ryan and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Verse 37. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the Ryan and the paw of the bear, he shall deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. So later, Goriath also despised uh, David and also doubted his capacity um, uh, to, uh, to challenge him. But in all this, David remained focused to his God-given assignment. He knew that as he was looking after his father's frock, God had been preparing for the challenge which was thrown to him and the other Israelites. So we need to know that, uh, to, uh, that uh, we need to run from every experience we had to go, whether good or bad. Because every experience has a lesson to offer. And just like David, we, we can look back in faith and gratitude and testify of the goodness and faithfulness of God. For our God remains the ancient of days, who is forever faithful. So we need to always remind ourselves that our God changes not. But he specializes in lifting us from one level of glory to another. That even as we pass through stuff, we will remember that, yes, the Lord who did it yesterday... He's still able to do it even today. Because the word of God reminds us that great is our Lord, exalted in power. His understanding has no limit. So we know that in whatever situation we find ourselves, our God is not limited in any way that he's able to come uh, uh, through for us. Because our God remains the great I am. Not the great I was or the great I'll be. He remains the great I am. And God continued to reveal himself to us as we face diverse challenges in his various dimensions. When we require provision, he's able to reveal himself in the dimension of God, our provider. When we require hearing, he's able to reveal himself in the dimension as God, the hearer. So in every area, if we require victory, he's able to reveal himself as Jehovah uh, Nisi in our lives. So it's good to continue to remember that our God remains the great I am, not the great I was or the great I'll be. And the fifth and last point is victory is assured when we have the right backing. Victory is assured when we have the right backing. Uh, because of the aspect of time, we may not read everything, but in your own time, you read from verse 45 to 51. And here we see that, we see that uh, things took a different turn when David confronted the Philistine champion, Goriath, by Bodre declaring to him that he was going against him in the name of the Lord uh, the, the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom he has defied. And God indeed granted David and the Israelites victory. And uh, in, Numbers, in Numbers 13, Numbers 13, 25, uh, 25 to 27 and verse 30, uh, let's begin uh, 25, 25 to 27 and then verse 30. 
uh, it says, at the end of 40, uh, 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of, of Paran. They, uh, there they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses his, uh, this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey, and here it's its fruit, just as it had been promised. And then verse 30, then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. We, uh, we need to, to remember that though there were 12 spies, but 10 of them gave a negative report. But two of them, that is Caleb and Joshua, because they, they were not facing the giants on their own, they knew that God was on their side, they boldly confessed that they gave the positive report. So even us, when we know who is backing, then we'll be able to take any challenge that comes on our way. We are able to face any challenge head, head, head on because we know that God is on our side. And in your own time, you'll be able to read Numbers 14, the following chapter, 14 from verse 33 to 34. And there you'll see God was, tell, was, telling, was telling those ones who, who failed to obey him, who murmured and rebelled against him, that uh, they are not going to enter the, 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 uh, the promised land. They will be destroyed in the wilderness. And in fact, they were told that for every day they spied the land, they, uh, that will be a full year that they are going to spend in the wilderness until all of them uh, died in the desert. So, uh, but, uh, so it's good that we, we choose to be on the, uh, on the Lord's side. We should not, mama should not complain. <clears throat> and, and I like David. David in most, uh, he is one person who faced his situations in, uh, uh, dark situations in his life. But he always uh, uh, confessed, uh, confessed, uh, confessed great things about his God. And in Psalms 18, Psalms 18, 28 to 29, here, uh, here he says that, uh, you Lord keep my ram burning. And my God turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale over a wall. So he knew, yes, he knew what it means to, ha to, to have the help of God, but he knew what it meant when God was also with, with, with him. He knew that there was no obstacle that could go before them. So, and... Uh, in 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 7 to 8, 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 7 to 8, and these were the words that were spoken by uh, King Hezekiah uh, when they were faced by the Assyrians. And he said, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria and the vast army with him, for there is a greater power with us. There is a greater power with us than with him. Verse 8, for with him is only the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people gained confidence from what Hezekiah, the king of Judah, said, even for us we need to know, greater is the power, even, even after 40, greater is the power with us, for the Lord is with us to help us and to, help, to fight our battles. That's what we need to, uh, to remember. So because... Uh, so, so even in, in, in the after 40, there will be new challenges for us. Challenges for us to, uh, to face head on because we know greater is the power with us for the Lord is with us to help us and to fight our battles. And finally, I would like we see uh, from verse 50, 51, finally the Lord our God uh, remains our ch song changer. He gives us new songs, songs of victory. And he, uh, in here, uh, let's, see, uh, let's read this. Therefore David ran and, and stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of its strength and killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they freed. Let's see verse 52. Now the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted. Remember, these were people who were timid, who were quaking with fear, who are running away when even Goriath tried to approach them. But we see things changing. That after now Goriath was down, they were able to, uh, to arose and they shouted. And what they were shouting, they were shouting, uh, 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 they were shout, those are shouts of victory. And they pursued the Philistines uh, as far as the entrance. 
Then uh, let's proceed to verse 53. Then the children of Israel returned from chasing the Philistines and they prodded their tents. So here we can see that uh, uh, these, these were very timid uh, previously. But as they were shouting, they were shouting in, uh, in victory and pursuing the Philistines. <clears throat> so, and uh, finally, here is Psalms 40, verse 1 to 3. <laughs> Psalms 40, verse 1 to 3. I like, I, I, it's, uh, so, and here, uh, the, the word of God says that I waited patiently for the Lord. And he cried to me and heard me. He also brought me out, up, me up, out of the horrible pit, out of the mire clay, and set my foot upon a rock, and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. God is able to put a new song in our mouth, a song of victory. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear, and will trust in the Lord. So we are saying that victory is assured when we have the right backing. Remember, we began with the issue of obedience. That obedience is going to, uh, is going to propel us uh, to, our, uh, to our place of opportunity so that we are able to, face, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to grab the, the opportunity that God has for us. The second thing we saw that we view things differently when we, we identify a cause in it. Do you do something just for the sake of it or you understand why you are doing it? The third thing we saw that only the truth we know and apply will be of benefit to us. The, third, the fourth thing we saw, that despite accepting the challenge that is going to, ca, to, uh, to come uh, to us, there are people who are going to doubt us. But let's remember that uh, uh, we are not doing it on our own. Let's encourage ourselves knowing that the God who has been with us in the past is able to come through for us in, even in the new season because he remains the great I am. And that victory is assured when there is right backing. And, and in conclusion, Jesus declared it's finished. In other words, he was saying, there is a cause. When Jesus declared it's finished, in other words, it's like he was saying, there is a cause. Jesus openly declared there is a cause by dying for our sins, our brokenness, our sicknesses. He de defeated the powers of darkness. Even today, Jesus says, yes, your life has a purpose. It has a meaning. I died for you because you are the cause. Jesus came like David, destroying our enemies. He gave us a pattern to follow, helping others to, uh, to get free. Jesus, so we need to also to be there so that you can be able to help others. But even as we face out, let's remember that we are not doing it on our own. You may be in this service and you're not, you are not in covenant relationship with God. So you have not embraced the work of Calvary, where Jesus said it's finished, where he overcame death and every work of the forces of darkness that we may receive our forgiveness, that you may receive our deliverance. But it's a point that you can say yes to Jesus. And, uh, 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 and you just say to Jesus, and he's going to come into your life, and you bring change and transformation. That even as you face after 40, you'll be going boldly knowing that you're not alone, but God, who you are in covenant with, who we are said that one of the benefits of being in covenant with someone is that your battle becomes their battle. So you can do that this morning. Are you there and you'd like to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life? So even after this, you can see uh, any of the, the readers here uh, or even talk to Anasha and they'll direct you appropriately and uh, God is going to come to your life and do good and great things in your life. So we can stand up and even as we stand up, I'm asking, are you facing Agoria today? Allow Jesus to defeat the enemy's stronghold, stronghold and rise. The battle is, is the Lord's. So it's in, important we continue to call upon the Lord because greater is the power with us. For the Lord is with us to help us and to fight our battles. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you, Lord, and we want to glorify you for you reign king of glory. You reign forevermore. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, because, Lord, of bringing us King of Glory as this KZ ministry, Lord, even to this uh, after 40 King of Glory. Heavenly Father, Lord, we celebrated, Lord, we continue to celebrate, Lord, your great doing for the last 40 years, King of Glory. 
Thank you that Lord Bishop, Lord, did not give up King of Glory. You gave him the staying power. And that's, that's why King of Glory, today we are part of this great family of DCIKZ. And thank you, Lord, for more than 40 years, King of Glory. Lord, this altar, Lord, the fire of this altar has continued to burn day and night, King of Glory. Lord, this altar has continued to speak, Lord, into our lives. This altar has continued to minister to us. This altar has continued to fight for us. And Lord, even this day, Jehovah God, as we have heard your word, King of Glory, Lord, may this altar, Lord, continue to speak to us, minister to us, and fight our battles, King of Glory. And Heavenly Father, Lord, even as we, fa uh, even as we, uh, we face the challenges after 40, Jehovah God, give us the boldness, Lord, that you move in courage and in faith, King of Glory, knowing that, Lord, you are backing us, King of Glory, knowing that, Lord, you are able to prepare divine setups for our, divine, uh, for, for, for our breakthrough, even as we walk, Lord, in the path of obedience to the honor, Lord, and to the praise, Lord, of your holy name. Lord, your people, Lord, may have come, Lord, with the diverse need, King of Glory. May you meet them, Lord, at their very point of need, even as you continue to glorify yourself in them and even through them, to the honor, Lord, and to the praise, Lord, of your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Pastor Steve, for allowing the Lord to use you.